you guys. Another Saturday morning is here. It's the weekend. We're getting ready to disassemble the Yugo. And uh, thank you all so much for watching the first video where we tore the engine out of my 05 Toyota Echo. Uh, it did really well. You guys are still kicking ass on that video. So thanks for watching that. This is going to be part two, uh, day three, I guess, of working on this project. The goal here today is to do the same thing that we did with the Echo, and that is to get the engine out of the Yugo so that we can start getting some measurements and see what it's going to take to drop that 1NZ into this car over here. And you guys can watch until we're ready to pull this thing out or until something fun happens. We're frustrated. Okay, so we are making some progress. Uh, we've got the, obviously the spare tire, the battery out, the hoods off. We got the air box off. A lot of you guys were wondering what the scoop was on the um, hood. Well, it's not ram air, unfortunately. It's fresh air so that you can get air into your heater box and you can see in there, there is your uh, blower fan. So we've got to kind of get some of this stuff out of the way as well. Um, over here against the front, we've got our big pile started over there. That's our uh, radiator fan, radiator, air box, uh, battery cables, all that stuff is over there. Um, and we're trying to get to the point where we can kind of get this condenser out as well as the AC fan because it's kind of blocking a little bit of stuff uh, in there that we can get at. Uh, the brake booster's got to come out. Yes, it's got to be come out and relocated. And when we were taking the measurements over here, I mentioned to you guys that the firewall was so much more forward on this car. Well, as you can tell, it's right here. And if we come over here where the cowl is, I mean, you got a good probably six inches or better uh, where the cowl is set back and the firewall is so much more forward. So that's gonna play havoc with us a bit because we're gonna have to relocate the brake booster. It's gonna be in the way because the transmission's gonna be here. So what I've seen done and what I have planned to do is to take this and basically relocate it up into the spare tire well up in here, which means we're probably gonna end up turning it around somehow and building some linkage for the brake pedal. Simple fix. Uh, we don't have to worry about the mechanical clutch because on this car, everything's hydraulic and uh, it'll get everything up out of the way. So uh, this will flip up in there and in the meantime, that's what we're gonna do. That'll give us plenty of room to kind of yank this thing out the same way we did with the Echo. So, um, we're still plugging away. I didn't bother doing time lapse on all the piddly little stuff just because I can sit here all day and just pick and label and get things out. And it's just very, very slow going. I'm trying to be a little bit more methodical with this car than I was with this one because, well, this one's getting junked when we're done. And this one here is, is obviously the one that we want to keep. So, uh, we've got to be very careful when we're taking bolts and nuts and wires and all this stuff because, again, I've been labeling as we go along, uh, you know, we've got starter, we've got the AC fan, uh, we've got what, uh, oil pressure, uh, coolant temp. So some of this stuff is a little base, more basic on this car than that one. Anyways, I'm going to keep plugging away here and I'll jump back with you here in a few minutes with an update. Okay, so where we're at right now is we've got uh, a lot of things disconnected. We're getting ready to pull that master cylinder and brake booster out. Um, it took a little bit to get to the brake lines because, well, apparently the reservoir is just kind of pressure fit in there. It's kind of a weird design. There's a couple of grommets and I question why there was zip ties holding everything together. Uh, I popped the zip ties and went to go wiggle the reservoir and while it popped out, well, this is what we were up against. So I pulled the reservoir off and like I said, there's just a couple of grommets that hold it in place and well, everything started leaking out of the reservoir. So we've got quite a bit of brake fluid down around everything. So. That should make it real fun when I get underneath the car to pull the axles and everything. And speaking of axles, as you can see right there, there shouldn't be any problem getting this one pulled out on this side or on the passenger side. There's nothing covering them. Just reach in there, give a little bit of a pry, they should pop right out. Before we get the car jacked up, I'm gonna get this uh, master cylinder disconnected. We gotta go inside and remove the brake pedal. And uh, we'll get that out of the way, jack the car up, and uh, start removing the axles out of the uh, spindles and out of the transmission.
And once we get to that point, then we can start hooking the cherry picker up, removing some uh, mounts, and see if we can wedge this thing out from the engine bay. Once we get that far, then we can kind of start taking our measurements again like we did on the Echo and marking them down on our orange board and comparing what we have to see if that 1NZ is actually going to fit in here. Let's get to work. So this is my first time in here looking at everything and it looks like it's going to be pretty simple. There's a little cotter pin uh, right here. We're going to pop that out and that should allow us to take that brake lever uh, off of here. Once we get that off of this little pivot, then that rod should be able to pull right through once we get everything unplugged underneath the hood. So let's get that cotter pin out and get that uh, lever out of there. Ow! And then that should just, in theory, should just slide off. Out of the way. Okay, so now that that is off and out of the way, let's go back underneath the hood. So we've got your mechanical clutch here. There's just a cable driven, and we've got to get this off as well because it looks like that cable goes up through there and through the firewall uh, through the bracket that the brake booster is mounted to. It looks like a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. So uh, let's get this get disconnected here so that when this comes off, we can just kind of slide that cable out through. So we're getting ready to go under the Vugo and get these axles out. Far, far better setup as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's a little bit different. The inner axle or CV part is held in with three 10 millimeter bolts. So you pop those bolts off, they're easy to get at, and boom, the axle just kind of, it's actually a seal, pops out. And that's how you drain your transmission fluid all over the floor again. Luckily this time I had a cardboard box here to catch the brake fluid that I had dropped earlier, but we also found, uh, but we also found there was a drain plug. So we pulled that and drained everything into this kitty litter bucket. So that should be good to go. We got our inch and three sixteenths axle nut off. This thing is ready to pop out. So let's get that done. We'll move to the other side, get that done. And then, we're pretty much ready to start yanking on this uh, engine, getting it out once the mounts are let go. Oh, and the exhaust. Shoot. Guess we gotta do the exhaust too. Anyways, let's get these axles out. There we go. Just like so. So there's the driver's side one out. We'll go get the other side out. Last time it was the axle on the driver's side on the Echo, and today it's this bottom bolt here in the strut. It'll spin, but it won't poke out. On the other side, the two just kind of almost practically fell out. Same with the top one here. Um, and it's not necessarily seized, but she just don't want to go. And uh, I can't get uh, I can't get a swing on it to uh, get up in there, so. 
We'll keep fighting with it, and we'll be back when we're ready to yank out this freaking axle. Well, we took a little break, had a little beverage, and listened to this song here, Don't Stop Me Now. And it's got me motivated to uh, keep on going with this car. We've got uh, the axles are out. The exhaust is cut off. We've got the transmission mount on the driver's side. And we've got the engine mount over here on the passenger side. The only two things that are going to hang us up a little bit are the fuel line and the wires going to the distributor. Neither of which I can really get to. So I'm going to try disconnecting the mounts, jacking it up, and then working at it once everything is up. There seems to be lots of slack in both the fuel line and in those wires. Hopefully, um, it's not going to be too much of a problem to get those out. So let's get the cherry picker over here, get it connected, and uh, we can start yanking on this motor, getting it out of the way. Let's do it. take a little more care getting this engine out we have finally done it and uh, we're still on day three that's uh, we started about 10 o'clock it's now about 4 30 I think it is and uh, so one day to get the engine out of this thing of course we weren't dealing with things like rusty bolts like we were on the echo uh, but let's go over take a look at the two engines and then we'll come back here we'll start getting some measurements for the orange board and compare just to see exactly how much space we've got to deal with to see if that one NZ is actually gonna fit in there. So there's not much difference in size between these two um, as far as actually looking at them side by side. In fact, if anything, well, the Yugo engine looks a little bigger, but in fact, uh, they're pretty close the same size, if not the Yugo being a little bit smaller. A little bit bigger transmission maybe on this end uh, because I don't know if it's because it's a five speed, I have no idea. Uh, but nevertheless, we've got some measurements uh, we want to take a look and see if the uh, 1NZ is actually going to fit over here in the Yugo. And uh, we know what the measurements are here from the what we had. Let's go over and see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got some initial measurements. And as you can see here, we've got 32 inches between the frame rail at the very back. Uh, we're about 32 and a half at the front. Now, depth-wise, we've got a full uh, 22 inches, 22 and a half inches which is very surprising. I didn't think that we had as much room as we did, but what we need to have is we need to have 15 inches here for the engine and 19 and a half inches for the transmission. Uh, the transmission sticks back a ways, but knowing that we've got the 22 and a half to start with, we've got a little bit of wiggle room to play with here. The big thing is gonna be making sure that the geometry of where the transmission comes out is it going to line up with the, you know, the wheel wells? We want to make sure those wheels are set in center. Uh, that's the thing with this type of a uh, setup. The axles are CV axles. They can bend a little bit if they need to. Hopefully, uh, we don't have to bend that much. Uh, when I measured my distance between my struts, the widest distance is 48 inches, and that is the two bolts that are furthest apart. So that would be this one here, and the far one on the outside. When we come over to the Yugo, that's this mark right here. So when we come over to this side, it's that mark right there. We might be able to make this work with that strut set up, that geometry on that strut. Um, just some rough calculations, uh, the bottom bolt would be right here and the other top bolt would be roughly where this one here is so your strut would be kind of moved over this way a little bit 
I don't know. We got to take a look and see what those inner fender wells look like. We can probably rebuild those if we have to, but we might be able to take that strut, set up those knuckles, those brakes, everything, control arms, we'll have to figure something out there and make that work. See, that car has a K-frame. This car does not. It uses mounting on the frame rail and the inner fender structure here for the engine. It uses the same similar setup over here for the transmission. And then that bar right there is what bolts in from the bottom of the floor to over here. And then it's got a couple of bolts to help support the transmission or everything right in the middle. This bar is your sway bar, believe it or not. It goes from your lower control arm up to the frame here. And then the lower control arm bolts into the unibody structure. Same thing on the other side. There's not a whole lot here. So what we're going to probably end up having to do, if we use this setup with those control arms, is we're probably going to have to build something to come out from the unibody here somewhere, some sort of a structure to go from there over to here to bolt that lower control arm in. And then that way we can kind of mount that up with the strut tower here. I'm going to have to get somebody in here a little bit smarter than me to help me out with that, uh, with that to figure it out. I don't know. Uh, what that's going to look like. Like I said, because this car doesn't have a K-frame, we're going to have to stiffen it up somehow. Uh, likely a strut brace to go from each side of the strut will help stiffen that part, but we've got to do the same thing on the bottom. Um, you know, doubling, tripling, quadrupling the horsepower, whatever it happens to be on this car, well, we've got to make sure that uh, she's rigid enough that um, it's not going to fly apart on us when, uh, when we're out racing. Alan from Compost Garage, because if you remember in the last video, and I will link that up over here somewhere, maybe over here, over here, um, I called him out, and he's got a Yugo. Uh, he's actually got two of them, I think. He's got a red one, and he's got a blue one. He might even have a white one. I don't know. Anyways, the blue one is the most recent one that he yanked the motor out of. You'll see his video come out very soon, and uh, with the response to um, my calling him out, and uh, he's doing a motor swap on his Yugo as well. So we don't know exactly when this race uh, will be. Likely it won't be this year, probably next year sometime. So we've got to figure that out and get that looked after. But uh, the same token, we're having some fun. Uh, he's got lots of support behind him, Canada versus US. And if you guys don't know who he is, I'm going to leave a link up there as well as the uh, description box down below. Make sure you go over and check out his channel because uh, he's doing some great stuff over there. He knows a heck of a lot more about these cars than I do. That may be his advantage uh, when it comes to winning uh, this uh, race that we've got. So we still have yet to put a uh, prize or a, a, a bet, a wager on this race, but we've got to figure it out. Um, so anyways, uh, make sure you head over to his channel, check that out. And in the meantime, if you guys aren't subscribed to Old Car Guy, that's me. Make sure you do because uh, we've got lots to do on this engine swap, so I hope that you stick through. Uh, so far, like I said earlier in the video, you guys are killing it with the video views. Uh, you're watching and you're sharing it out, so make sure you are sharing this out with your friends. If you guys want some old car guy merch, like the Dale the Truck t-shirt. You guys don't know who Dale the Truck is? Well, that's my 1977 Chevy C10. Uh, there's a whole playlist on that as well. And undercover, that's my 79 Chrysler Cordoba. That's right, we've got a B-body Chrysler in the garage. And uh, don't forget, we've also got lots of videos on Panther Platform. You guys don't know what those are. Lincoln Town Cars, Grand Marquis, and Ford Crown Vicks. We've got lots of those on the channel as well. So uh, always doing something with them. Make sure you subscribe to Old Car Guy. I really appreciate it. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.